there's ten of them by itself. There you should go. That's before we even start. Again. Yeah, there's stuff up here. Oh, we can tell. Look at that. Um. It's not stopping as well, it's supposed to be about 15 seconds. Five seconds? Five seconds. That's gone three times in a row then. Oh, look, man. It's killing it. That is crazy. So Come on, Gwen. We're going to go as well, Gwen. This is going to be 10, isn't it? That is weird. That was me. That was me. That was you. Ted's going away with him. Yeah, Ted's just on his own. He's rocking it. That is crazy. Oh my god. Shall we do a start in here then, Tony? I mean, I've started. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, I've said you caught that anyway. Well, we've started, and obviously, Al Alan Robson, Kenny's with me. Hollywood McShane, Tony behind the camera. We are here. We've already had stuff start before. We technically had started. We're in Ye Old Cross. This is the upstairs room where they've just held a uh, fork night, a really yeah. successful fork night. Now, mm -hmm. this place has only been here since 1909, but it's on the site of a previous pub from 1850. And then there was a gap for a little while but for hundreds of years prior to that, this place was on a crossroads, ye old, because ye old cross was two trees, but it just fallen over like that. That's all the, the old cross was. And then when they moved the trees out of the way, there was no reason for this place to be called the old cross. Right. So in the 1700s, they built an old cross. And it was a new cross for a while, <laughs> and then in the 1900s they replaced it with the modern cross that's out there now. But the most interesting thing is that we are actually in the space, this space, the upstairs space, was the brothel of the old carriage house. You know where coaches would come. And this is a place where a very famous local man called Robert Hazlitt. He was probably Tyneside's most famous highwayman. Right. But, you know, everybody paints a picture, and how many women wouldn't want to get robbed by somebody looking like Adam Ant? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I'm the dandy highwayman. <laughs> and it wasn't like that at all. A lot of the people that were highwaymen didn't even have horses. Now, Hazlitt did have a horse, and he did a lot of robbing, but he fell in love here on the site of Ewald Cross, when it used to be a coaching house. On, you've got to remember, a lot of the bridges weren't here, so people couldn't easily get across the river. So they went along the side of the town until they found a ford. And the most famous and nearest ford from Newcastle was Newburn Ford, which is just up the road. So they would come along here a lot and they'd stay overnight and we're going to Newcastle tomorrow, we'll just, we'll rest tonight in the coaching house. So they'd come here, but upstairs the brothel and a few rooms for you there. Oh, there's Ted. Oh, oh. The brothel, Susie said Susie brothel. Said brothel. <laughs> Ted's away. And it's in an unfortunate place. <laughs> <laughs> Ted's flashing his bones about the brothel. He is, absolutely. But if this, this was the brothel floor, and it was run by a woman called Christine Byrne. Christine Byrne had short hair at a time when women didn't have short hair. And she ran all of the girls uh, of the brothel. And she said that she was the only one who slept with Robert Hazlitt. Right. No one else was allowed to sleep with him because they were in love. They were going to spend the rest of their lives together. So he made a mistake, Hazlitt. One day... He saw somebody in a carriage, so he rode up, give us your money or I'll shoot you, you mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. because you got to remember these were not nice, no. not tricorn hats, you know, it was, 
there's none of that up here. No. It was give us your cash or I'll kill you. But it was a reverend from a local church that we're going to be visiting a little bit later. And his name was William Hope. Now, William Hope was friends with the alderman. He was friends with the head of the fort. He was kind of in a position to do Hazlitt. Look at this. Again. He was in position to do Hazlitt a lot of harm. So Hazlitt then came riding along here to Christine and said, Hey, Christine, look, it's not stopping, is it? No. He likes the story. It does. Because maybe it's, it's, maybe it's attached. Maybe you, you know, yeah. so maybe it's them. But he came and said, Christine, look, I've inadvertently robbed the Reverend. And he knows I gave my name. Because he always says, I'm Robert Hazlitt, to frighten people. Because people had heard bad things about him before. You've just heard that noise too. Did you hear that there? I did, yes. It was a chair moving. It was a chair moving. One of these chairs here. Like the scrapey sound of you. Ooh. Your story again, sorry. No, it's okay. So anyway, we came across to Christine. Christine, I've made a boo-boo. Probably didn't use those words. Uh, I ended up robbing the Reverend. He's going to bring the force of uh, the troops and everybody's going to be looking for me. So between Christine and Robert Hazlitt, they came up with a plan. Hazlitt was going to rob as many people as he could within a 24 to 48 hour period. With the money and the goods that he stole in that time, he and Christine were going to run away together and live a happy life. He was going to buy a farm. He wasn't going to steal anymore. This was his dream come true. And, of course, he went on that day to carry out two robberies. The first one was Miss Benson, a woman who lost her very expensive watch and a bag full of coins, Miss Benson. And then he noticed in the distance a postman. Now, they weren't dressed in red, you know, like they are no, now. No. But he reckoned he saw a postman in the distance and he thought, I know what I'll do. I'll get Miss Benson to scream. And you presume that he got her to do that by cuffing her. She screams. The postman comes running along. Now, Hazlitt's already identified himself. But little was he to know that the postman that was coming along wasn't the local postman for this area in Wrighton. It was his postman where he lived along the road at Clara Vale. Right. Right. And he ended up having to hide in a place called Channels Woods, which is apparently on the other side of Wrighton. If you live in this area, you'll know it. He had a shack in there. And he used to have that shack. Did you hear any footsteps or is that? it just me? No, it was like breathing. Was that you, Tony? Uh, it was a squeak. Kind of squeak? I thought it was a... No, it's it's like a squeaky thing. So anyway... There's no one else up here. Bottom line is, you've got him desperate to, to get as much money as he can. But this postman was his postman from the other side of Ryan, right. who knew where he was living. He was in that shack in the woods. So within 24 hours, and he said he was only going to rob for another 48 before running off with Christine, Within 24 hours, he was arrested. He was taken to Newcastle Assizes, which was just at the top, uh, roughly where Warwick Street bus station is. Right. There yeah, was yeah. a courthouse there. And he ended up being hanged there to a huge crowd. And then they brought his body back and it was paraded here, but eventually they stuck him on a spike and Gateshead fell a little bit further along because they felt more people would pass it over there than they would out here by the yeah. old cross. So, ha you get that, yeah? Footsteps. Is that you, Robert? Yeah. As soon as you said, Robert. Oh my God. What the hell is going on here? It's Robert. Did he die here? No, but this is where he enjoyed his... Um, well, yeah, he's probably... If it's... Come, come back yeah, here, it's his best times. Yeah, his best times, he wants to be here. Was that... Well, okay, that uh, was that you, Robert? I was just about to say, and he's already there. He had some good times here, Rob. 
with your beautiful woman? Or is it Christine? Is it you, Christine? Ooh. It's Christine. This is where she worked. Right. Top floor. The old building, not this building. Christine, how about that? My goodness. Could be them both. Are you both here? Oh. This is crazy. Are you both here? Get the neck of up, because you're going to get stuff on the Well, hang on, let's keep asking a few questions here, too. Did you choose to stay in the same space that you used to have so much pleasure together? Robert and Christine? No. Are you happy here? You're not playing. Just talk to us. We're here for you. Is this the first time you've heard this story in a while? Your story. No? I think we should also look downstairs. Where did you set the box? It's, it's, it's over the other end. And just remember that when you go downstairs, even if Tony's not there, the camera's on. Yeah. Across the full thing. I'm going to walk. Well, I'm going to necromance. Right. See if there's anything in here. Your radio's down there if anything happens. I've got mine. Robert a few times though. You don't need to bring them on the shirt. Thanks, man. Let's see if we can have a conversation with them. Come on, speak to us.
Oh, Gwen's gone. Cherries? Gwen's gone. Oh, hello. Was that you, Robert? Was it you, Christine? Who did that? Was that you? Was that you? Speak to me. Come on. Definitely a woman here. <laughs> Gwen's just gone. No way. Gwen is the goat. Thanks, Jen. Is that door slamming? It was Gwen's door. Is there more than one person here? Yes. This one seems to be. You working? More than two? Two? Ooh. I would just see one lately that there's only. Because if this was what it was, you know. Granted, it was a different building. Robert, are you there? The chances, the chances, I don't know. Robert Hazlitt. It's crossing. Are you with Christine? Yeah. That's a definite, isn't it? Yeah. Are there other here? Are there just the two of you? Are there more here? Yeah, there's more here. Is that, hearing voices, if, if they're yeah. all yeah. errant spirits, there's a lot more here. I just don't know how to communicate with them to find out. Why did you stay here? Did you, did you come back here because this was your happiest place? Christine, this is where you worked. Is that why you came back here? She's saying no, isn't it? Look. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a distinct no, isn't it? No. Could be someone pretending to them. Possibly anything's possible. Why did you come back here? Or did you just find yourself back here again? They were brought back here by whatever power, right. whatever energy, whatever force. Are you happy to be together? Well, that's, that's not a question. Mark. Do you intend? Do you intend to stay here? Yeah. Are you happy here? A man said that you switched a lamp on in the distance. Was that you? No. 
Another person said he saw a light coming out of the floor. Was that you? That's a, that's a no, isn't it? <coughs> Definitely a no. Are you glad that we're here? Maybe the first time they've heard their own story, you know. <coughs> You died in 1770. When did you die, Christine? Was it much later? 1775? 1780? Was it earlier than 1780? No, me. You weren't long behind him. Did you die of old? You can't have died of old age. You'd still be a young woman. Were you killed? Did you die of disease? No. Oh. Just trying to think what was happening around 1770. <coughs> it's long after the plague, long after the Black Death. What did you die of? Was illness? Was it pneumonia? Was it influenza? <coughs> was it cold? Cola? Cholera? Nah, it was too late for cholera. Mm, too consumption? Consumption? Yeah. No. I had a consumption. Which is to vote TV, to vote your losses. And you found. How did he find you? Or did you just wake up from death here with him? How did you find him? Did he find you? He stopped altogether. She's saying no. Is that them setting the ball off then or not? We could ask. Did you set the ball that lit up? Was that you? Yes. Right, well, let's test them. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at them now. Do it again if that was you. Prove it. <laughs> Do it again. Set the ball off if that was you. Do it again. They stop playing all together. I mean, look at a minute. I'm not feeling anything. It's weird. Now they've stopped. Spirit effect, maybe? Do you think? Yeah, I do. Just to see what they do. Where are they? Close. There is something here, isn't there? Well, I mean, it's been shown itself yeah, right from the very beginning. And that door went as well. We haven't done anything downstairs yet, so maybe. No, we can well, we can maybe head we down. Can head down there now. Should we bring Ted down? I think he's already where he is, isn't he? Really? I hope we'll not see anything that happens. Well, we may as well take everything down then. Shall we? we? Can do. Yeah, let's take everything down. Right. I mean, it's definitely worked up here, so... We know something's up here. Why not? Did you set any traps? Yeah, you can set the traps, but they're just there, so look. Can you bring them down too? You should have yeah. two lots. Where's your other one? Inside the lamp. It's on there, on there. Wow. So, someone switched the lamp on, the guy said. That's what, yeah. So, that's I was, ho I was hoping someone, something would switch the lamp on. You saw it on CCTV? Yeah. Oh. Caught it on, caught it on tape. That is cool. That is cool. Yes. All right. Gwen, you close up. <laughs> Gwen, come. Absolutely. I have no idea where I'm going. Let's stop. Is it? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Right. There's two traps. Be aware of them. 
There's a trap. And if I do traps on the fireplace, yeah. there's a trap on the edge of the table to show sort of Okay. Here it is. Have you tried the um, SLS in here? Have you got the SLS camera, Tony, and I'll give it a go. Yeah, it is. Well, if there's anybody here, let's I mean, see. we haven't tried that upstairs where all the action was. That's probably oh, the, shoot, the best on, thing then. to do. Let's do that then. Can well, you keep an eye down here, Kenny? I will. I'll, I'll be down in five. I'm just doing a quick walk around. Just a quick sweep because that's where everything's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that you? Kenny? Kenny? Sorry. Kenny? 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 He can't. He can't. He can't. No, we've got the mics on. There's got to be something in here. There has to be, with those balls going on. You'd think. There was something just in the bottom corner there. Did you see it? Look, no, there, there, there. I saw, yeah, something like hiding. Yeah. It was just a flash on the screen. It, it was. Didn't, didn't stay long. No. Two lots of it. To where it was. Where it was. It was just there. Mm hmm. And in between. It's gone. It's definitely there. You caught that. I caught it. It was just literally on the screen for a split second, wasn't it? It was. Just this.
This is where Ted was. Oh. Have you followed us downstairs maybe? Let's find out. Come on you. Had its fun with work with the yeah. flashy balls up there. We have gone downstairs, mate, like the, the toys, perhaps. Yeah. Oh! That's the your reflection. Was it? Are you sure? It's Am I that small, really? Well, it's a window and you're spanning exactly oh, where it? it is. I thought I was looking at. It's, it's like a backyard out there, but you can see me now. Now I look. Yeah. That must be me. Yeah. Oh, just so excited to see something. <laughs> just that shrunk. God, I wish we die, it would work as quick as that. <laughs> the box went off? Yeah, the box went off. Great. Got that on the camera, so it's good. Nothing upstairs. No. Not a thing. No. They've had, the, they've had the fun with the upstairs, I think. Yeah, but if we come down here, you think they'd do the same down here. Getting mad at effects here, haven't you, Tony? Have you seen this? It's just, it's a door. Some kind of stuff to that, you know. Ooh. What is going on? It's oh, got some that kind of stuff to that in the grip. Yeah. Gwen went off there. Yeah, well, that's you. I can see the hat. Okay. Ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Is that the reflection in the mirror? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Can you give it a spin? Go. I'll do a little. And I'll put the... I'll change this and see if we get anything on the ghost radar. Do you get that noise? What was that noise? Yeah. Oh. No. Well, they're still there. Yeah, it was. Oh. Oh. Uh, Alan, you just knocked the oh, table. Oh, yeah. Could be me. 
mix somewhere. Yeah, he's down he's in the cellar. Yeah. Up, maybe Nothing detected. Been and gone. Nothing detected. What's that noise? It's, it's not. It, should. it shouldn't do that on there. Maybe it's something to do with your phone. where we go. Because this chair comes up like red hot on here. Yeah, I can't see with it. You see? Oh yeah. Why is that? Hmm. It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be any warmer than anything else in here, should it? You see the windows? But that next window's got a coldness is coming through. You can see the windows. Something sad. Something sad. As soon as you walked over to the light, it went off. The red light just went off. Did it just went off? As soon as you walked over to it, just went off. As soon as you walked over to it, it went off. Look, Bess, you did and see. Yes, you did and see. So I said, did you turn it off? She said, yes. You did. That just assure you here. That's cool, so that shouldn't have gone off though, should it? No. So it just went off. It's around about here somewhere then, there must be down here. So spirit must be down here. So why do you not set the tail? Put it in 
one more. And then we'll head outside. Yeah, definitely. One more. Okay. Because they've that was a react that was a direct reaction to what we did. Yeah. So let's see if you get something else like that. Try one last one. Bess. Yes, you see, so. Hang on, we got something. Do you hear that? Like steps on the ceiling. Six meters is around here. There's another room. Six meters. Find me. Find me. That's clever. So we're hiding. Where are you if you're hiding? We're trying to find you. This way, six meters. Six meters. Didn't know this room was here. Just heard some footsteps a second ago. So we're gonna head outside? Yeah, I think let's do that. Let's get our bits and get cracking. And don't forget to share, share, share. Yeah, we need to share this. We need to share this as many times share as we can. Share this video and you'll win a prize. That would be fantastic if you could. It'll be a, one of our legendary night out badges. It'd be great if you could do that for us. Well, we're here just outside the pub and you find this amazing cross and it is an amazing cross. But the story of it is even more interesting. Now, the whole idea of this settlement, this settlement's been here, we believe, for at least 2,500 years. For much of that time, it didn't even have a name. However, it was known as the place of the old cross because hanging over a side of the road, which wasn't a road, it was a track, if you can imagine, with horses and stuff, uh, there was an old tree that had crossed and it looked like a cross. You know, there's two, two yeah, trees yeah, yeah. creating a, an X on the road. And it was known, if people were travelling by, saying, oh, whereabouts were you? Oh, was it that settlement near the old cross? And the old cross was the two trees. Well, the problem was that they moved the trees to build the road. Right. And everybody's saying, oh, where were you? Oh, we were at old cross, not writing, we are at old cross. So they built a cross in 1796, not that one. And in fact, if you come around the corner, you can see the, the crack. You've got uh, 1795 here, because the original cross, this wasn't there. That cross, whatever happened, disappeared, uh, fell down, rotted, was pulled down. Because you've got to remember, we were still warring and all kinds of stuff in that time. 1951, they built this glorious new one, which is a, a corking thing. Now, so many things uh, came about. For example, this place is called Raitun. And I said, my, one of my clues uh, for you guys to try and guess it was it's to do with crops. Right, yeah. Rye. The making of whiskey it was a big deal in this neck of the woods. This settlement was known for its drop of the hard stuff and obviously still is with the pub behind us. However, it wasn't called Rye Tun originally, it was called Rig Tun, T-U-N. 
So it's the home or the land of the rye. So that's where the name comes from, right? And so that's where we are today. We are heading all over the place, but while we're here, this cross, and I know a lot of people say that it's, uh, it's just the cross to symbolize the area, in a cemetery that we'll be visiting at some point, and also uh, up beside Stargate Colliery, where that pit used to be, there's war memorials naming names. And I want to mention, f well, four really. A guy called George Humble, George Jackson, Bob Balance, Billy Woff. and Billy Woff. Hey. Good man. <laughs> and it's all, it's all because of Billy Woff, really. Because the weird thing was, Billy Woff was a miner, and he worked at Stargate Pit. And when World War I began, Billy decided he was going to join immediately. And in 1915, he was sent to Gallipoli, and right. he died in the Battle of Kirith. Now, how much do you know about Gallipoli? Anything? Not much, really. Gallipoli was when the Allies, and who was on our side? You probably. This is amazing, because people don't know this, but... It was the British Army, the French Army. Italian? Russians. Never. It was the Russians, the oh. French, and the British fighting together. In, this is uh, early doors, World War I, because the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, right next to Russia, mm -hmm. they were taking control of the whole region, and the Russians hated that. So we were taking on the Turks, but at the time, the Turks had a massive, massive army, and they beat us. They, they, the whole Gallipoli campaign was destruction for all of the Allies. Mm. There's a film called Gallipoli starring Mel Gibson, which is worth watching because it does tell the story pretty graphically of what happened. However, <coughs> he died at Gallipoli. He was a miner from Wrighton, bless him. The other three lads I've mentioned went to the same pit, joined up at the same place, fought with him in the same battle and also died, which is tragic. But the reason, I just want you to hang on to that just for a second. And the reason I'm carrying this around because I, I try never to use like notes, but this is a letter. Now, do you know, we've seen many a film where somebody comes up to a door and knocks on the door and says, I'm terribly sorry, here's a letter from the Admiralty because the, your Royal Navy son has Died. passed. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think they put in them, those letters? Well, the modern ones are, he fought valiantly, and, yeah. it, and it's a long page, something for you to be proud of your, your sons. In the First World War, what they don't tell you is, quite often, they never sent a letter to anybody. <laughs> they just pinned on notice boards lists of the dead. However, this guy was shot in the chest and taken to a hospital, and a nurse wrote to Billy's wife, Mrs. Woff, here in Wrighton, and she kept the letter and she put it on line, and I just want to read it to you. Talk about no frills. Dear Mrs. Woff, I am sorry to write and tell you that your husband died this afternoon a little after 2 p.m. He was wounded in the chest and his lung was affected. Everything was done that was possible. He told me to give you his best love, head sister. And that was it. That was it. That's what you got. And she was damn lucky to get that because the vast majority didn't get a letter at all. They just got a notification. Now, later on, towards the end of the war, a lot of letters were sent out to try and make up for the fact that they hadn't been doing it. But uh, at the very beginning, especially 1914, 1915, a few letters went out at the very beginning that it just stopped altogether. And then when they realised they'd made a wreck and the war was coming to an end, they're thinking, let's get a, a tribute letter sent out to all of these people for their, their service and, and for the glorious deeds. Well, the First World War was just a bloodbath. It was, and, you know, we talk about war and what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. All of that. But people die. And what's achieved long term? Yes, we have to fight against people like Hitler and what have you. What does that mean to the enemies we have today it just exactly. does make yeah. you think but however we're going we're heading in this direction to a place that was built originally in 1112 can you believe it 1112 then the building that is there at the present time was built in 1250 and 
Talk about ghost stories, this is the business. The business up here. Oh, sorry, I'll take my, uh, my little torch and we'll, we'll head. I must admit, when I was doing this on Google Earth, like you do, I thought we could get up there, but they're all private drives. So we've been uh, pointed in the right, oh, there it is. Oh, the gates are closed, but the door's open. That's great. <laughs> We're heading to the church, which is, of course, uh, the old cross church, which is uh, just up at the Holy Cross. There it is. Holy Cross Parish Church in Wrighton. It says founded 1220. This church was built here. I said 1220. 1112, the first building of... And it, it, it was a priory more than it was a church. But uh, the stories attached to this place are amazing. One of them is about uh, a submariner called Fletcher who... Uh, he was in his submarine. He was a lieutenant, if memory serves. He was a lieutenant and he... Oh, hang on a second. Just got to make sure we head in the, the right direction up here. Let's have a quick look. But uh, this submariner, quite a story. There's a seaman called Fletcher, and there was a lieutenant called Robert Thorpe, who has a, a memorial here. Oh, hello. Straight away. <laughs> you get that as well? Yeah. Tremendous. Oh, look. Oh, the bells. Can you see that, Tony? Just down there, this, we've got movement. Oh, that's cool. That it's is cool. Years. The man. I just heard a voice behind you. Did you hear that? 1888. Getting voices as well. Look at that. Look how big this goes. Beautiful. Very steep. Down there though. Yes, it is steep. The man who's supposed to haunt this place is a lieutenant from Wrighton called Lieutenant Thorpe. Now, young Thorpe, in charge of a submarine that was inventively called Submarine M1, and it was in the English Channel, and it was sailing along when a Swedish ship sailed over the top of it, knocking the gun off the top, causing water to flood into the submarine, and uh, everybody died, 69 hands died. And I, I can't think of a worse way when you're 230 oh. feet down with the pressure and everything. Yeah, Horrible. He's said to walk here though. Uh, there's three ways that people see him. And he, he apparently walks around the cemetery and you hear humming because he was quite, a, he was known for right. So humming. He's also been known to be sitting at the side of a grave and the other thing that people said that they've seen, uh, it's like a, just a hand on the back, you know, when you're walking, yeah. almost like to say everything's going to be all right. Right. This is a now, graveyard. It is incredible. And if we go behind the church, there's a path through to the only registered battlefield in Tain and Weir, the Battle of New Bern Ford. And I can tell you all about that. I see they've got motion sensor lights which is good helps us out a little bit but we've got to keep an eye open for the lieutenant if he's due to be here this is where he's this is where he sits next to graves and he reassures people that everything's going to be all right oh look at that jesus christ Is that you, Ollie? Oh, somebody's just crawled on me. Oh, don't, man. Oh. Somebody pushed us. 
Jesus Christ. So, we've had a little bit of everything and we're now heading into a place where the only registered national battlefield in Tain and Weir, that's where we're going. We're also taking you to a, an incredible church with tales of cholera, Roman battles and decapitations, a little bit of all kinds and World War II thrown in for good measure. If people want to join us, I really hope you do, Tony, how do they do it? Yeah, on Facebook, just uh, hit the link in the description of the video, become a su subscriber, and then part two will be there, as long as with all the other part twos. And on YouTube, just join the channel, and part two will be in the members area. And obviously, the more people that join us, the further we can go, the more tales we can tell. See you on the other side.